classification. This video is part one of two covering how we organize and classify living things. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the current classification system used in science. You should be able to list the three current domains of life. You should be able to list the three characteristics used to group ca the kingdoms of life. And you should be able to describe the characteristics of the kingdom's bacteria and archaea. It is human nature to want to classify things and group things. So we could group living things by their structure and function, such as how are they actually built, what do they physically look like, and how do they actually live. Do they need to consume others for food? Can they make their own food? And once we do that, we can then organize them into groups of closely related creatures. So we can say all the creatures that have a backbone are in one group, all the creatures that do not have a backbone are in another group. Currently, this is the classification system we use. It is based off Carl Linnaeus' classification system. There is a certain level from broad to narrow that you go through. The broadest classification is the domain, which there are currently three of them. Then that is broken down into six kingdoms. Each kingdom is broken down into several phylum and subphylums. The phylums are broken down into class. Class is broken down into order. Orders are broken down into families. Families are broken down into genus or genera. And finally, the genera or genus are broken down into the species. So even with this f breakdown, there are subfamilies, there are subgenera, there are subspecies. So these are the big ones, the main ones. And I do expect you to know the order of them from the largest, the broadest, the domain category to the narrowest, the species. So you can see an example here of the jaguar. It's in the domain Eukara, the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, which means it has a backbone, the class Mammalia, which means it's a mammal, the order Carnivora, which means it's a carnivore, the family Philidae, meaning it's a cat, the genus Panthera, meaning it's a panther, and finally the species Panthera pardus, which is a specific type of jaguar. Currently, there are three domains of life, bacteria, archaea, and eukara. The first two are prokaryotic, so they have a, do not have a nucleus, while the eukarya stands for eukaryotes. And we'll go through some of the characteristics of each in a second. So now that you have the three domains of life, there is, those three domains are broken up into six kingdoms of life. The grouping of the kingdoms is based on three main factors. First being cell type. Is it a prokaryote or is it a eukaryote? Then you have cell number. Is it unicellular one cell organism or multicellular many celled organism? And finally you have feeding type. Is it autotroph or heterotroph? Which I'll explain right now. So feeding type is how the organisms actually get their food. There's two types. The first one is an autotroph. Auto means self, troph means energy, so autotrophs actually make their own food like plants. The second type is a heterotroph or a consumer, so heterotrophs have to eat others to get their energy, like animals. The remaining part of this video and the next video go over the characteristics of the six kingdoms of life. So you can see currently the six kingdoms of life are archaea bacteria, bacteria, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. I highly suggest you copy down this chart in your notes and fill it in as we are going through each of the six kingdoms. Basically for this section you need to know this chart. You need to know what bacteria is, what characteristics it has, and how is it different than Protista or Protists. Some of them are much sim more similar than other ones. For cell type, it will either be prokaryote or eukaryote. For cell number, it will be either unicellular or multicellular. For cell wall, it will be yes or no or both. Locomotion is movement, so either it can move, some can, it can't move, or sometimes there's both present in a kingdom. And finally, feeding type, is it autotrophic 
or heterotrophic. Of the six kingdoms of life, two of them are prokaryotic bacteria and archaea or archaea bacteria. That leaves the other four being eukaryotes, having a nuclei. So you have protists or protista, you have plants or plantae, you have fungi, and you have animals or animalia. This slide just shows you a picture of one example in each of them. So in domain bacteria, you only have the kingdom bacteria. In domain archaea, you only have the kingdom archaea bacteria. And in domain eukarya, you have protists, animals, plants, and fungi. So two of them are prokaryotic, while the other four are eukaryotic. First, we'll go over the bacteria. Once again, you just need to know the information in the chart. I am adding a little information just so for extra knowledge, so you're knowledgeable about the subject. But for the test, you only need to know the information in the chart that you write down. So bacteria, they're single-celled organisms, so they're unicellular. They're microscopic. It's impossible to see bacteria without a microscope. They have no organelles because they're prokaryotic. But obviously, they have a cell membrane, and they must have DNA. And they're the most common form of life on the planet, and there's a credible number of different kinds. So you can see the diversity is extremely large. You can see there's rod-shaped ones, sphere-shaped ones, spiral ones, staphylococcus, which is staph infections, streptococcus, strep throat, salmonella, um, E. coli, bacillus. So for bacteria, as we already said, they are prokaryotic, they are unicellular, all bacteria, however, have a cell wall, all bacteria have the ability to move, however, bacteria can be autotrophic, and they can be heterotrophic. So they can be both feeding types. Some of them feed on others. Some of them are photosynthetic and can take energy from the sun. There are both good and bad bacteria. You have pathogens, which cause disease and infections. And then you have other bacteria, which actually help in digestion and help plants grow. The second kingdom that we're discussing in this video is Archaebacteria, or in the domain Archaea. So RK literally means ancient, so these are ancient bacteria. They live in extreme environments, so they're known as extremophiles. So they like to live in very high heat conditions, very high salt conditions, not a very nice place to live. The key thing, and they're actually extremely similar to bacteria, which is why they're called archaea bacteria, in that so they have the same cell type, so archaea are prokaryotic, archaea are unicellular, Archaea do have a cell wall. Some archaea can move. Some archaea cannot move. So they have both types of locomotion. Some can move, some can't. And just like bacteria, they can both be autotrophic and make their own energy. Sorry, make their own food using energy. And some are heterotrophic and consume others. Originally, they thought archaea and bacteria were the same because you can see the characteristics is almost exactly the same. However, the one big difference that they discovered was that in pr the protein synthesis, transcription, translation in archaea was much more similar to the, what is done in eukaryotes. There's more steps involved than what actually occurs in the other bacterial transcription, translation. So they decided it was time to actually make their own domain and split them away from the bacteria.